15 Scary Fake Foods in China Fake rice presents a grave danger to public health, as it is often concocted from synthetic ingredients such as potatoes, sweet potatoes, and plastic resin. This results in rice that retains its hardness even after cooking and lacks essential nutritional value. Certain honey manufacturers in China engage in deceptive practices by adding illicit antibiotics and heavy metals to their products in order to boost weight and profitability, posing serious health risks to unsuspecting consumers. In Guangdong province, tofu processing facilities have been caught using prohibited chemicals to bleach and soften tofu, thereby exposing consumers to potentially severe health complications. The proliferation of counterfeit eggs made from resin, starch, pigments, and paraffin wax presents a formidable challenge as they are difficult to detect and can have adverse effects on health. Despite regulatory measures introduced after the 2008 milk scandal, reports of fraudulent milk products containing fats, milk essence, and preservatives continue to emerge, posing ongoing risks to consumers. Adulterated liquor, laced with harmful substances like methanol, poses grave health hazards for consumers. Spices derived from dubious sources such as mud or artificially dyed corn flour carry a host of health risks and are notoriously difficult to identify. Industrial-grade salt masquerading as table salt often contains harmful impurities and chemicals, thereby posing significant health risks. The deceptive practice of dyeing green peas with harmful coloring agents to enhance their appearance presents serious health risks to unsuspecting consumers. Counterfeit genong, concocted from sugar, starch, and root fibers, lacks any genuine medicinal properties and may even be toxic to health. The discovery of walnuts filled with concrete fragments underscores the brazen nature of food fraud, exposing consumers to potential health hazards. Shrimp falsely labeled as wild-caught, but in reality, are farmed and artificially enlarged, pose health risks to consumers due to the methods used. Fake rice noodles manufactured from industrial-grade materials not only lack nutritional value but also undermine the reputation of legitimate producers. Artificially dyed sweet potato noodles deceive consumers and jeopardize their health by exposing them to toxic chemicals. The misrepresentation of cheaper meats as lamb, when in fact they may be sourced from undesirable sources like rat, fox, or mink, poses significant health risks and tarnish the reputation of genuine producers. Amidst the squalid conditions of sewage-laden environments, individuals engage in the illicit extraction of gutter oil, concoct juices from putrid apples, and handle beloved snacks like spicy strips without the basic hygiene measure of wearing gloves. Packages of dried squid swarm with flies, while workers nonchalantly trample upon chicken feet and employ their unclean hands and feet in noodle production. Bananas undergo soaking and ripening agents to produce chili sauce, all while one worker callously sprays toxic ripening agents on sugarcane, indifferent to the potential poisoning of consumers, solely focused on sales. A daring woman, scooping up gutter oil, brazenly brandishes supposed legal documentation. Would you even consider consuming food processed under such deplorable conditions? China's food safety crisis, marked by gutter oil scandals, contaminated rice and milk powder, and the rampant use of hazardous additives, perpetuates a perilous food chain that ultimately reaches the tables of unsuspecting citizens. Meanwhile, China's officials enjoy access to a separate, presumably safer, food supply, further highlighting the stark disparities in accountability and supervision. Rather than address these egregious violations or bolster regulatory oversight, authorities turn a blind eye, allowing such widespread malpractice to persist unchecked. A recent report by CCTV News, a state-run media outlet in China, initially intended to shift focus onto Japan's alleged mishandling of nuclear waste by highlighting excessive radiation levels in Japanese sea base. However, the unintended consequence was the public's renewed scrutiny of China's own food safety shortcomings, underscoring the pervasive nature of the issue. China's ongoing food safety crisis stems primarily from lax oversight, corruption, and inadequate national standards. This troubling combination has created a breeding ground for unethical practices and harmful products flooding the market. From pork, the nation's staple meat, to beloved fruits like cantaloupes, no food item seems immune to adulteration. Take pork production, for instance. While it remains the most consumed meat in China, its journey from farm to table is riddled with deceit. In Jiangsu province, Undercover journalists once captured shocking footage of a slaughterhouse injecting water directly into pigs. The scene was a disturbing display of callousness, with workers using high-pressure hoses to force water down the throats of helpless animals. Each pig would emerge from this ordeal carrying an additional 1.5 kilograms of water weight. Even more alarming is the complicity of government inspectors, who were caught dozing off in the very facilities meant for oversight. 
it was revealed that slaughterhouse workers were responsible for stamping inspection seals on pork products, while quarantine certificates were fabricated by the slaughterhouse owner. Though some may argue that the use of tap water in these processes is relatively benign, the addition of gelatin in Sudan red paints a far more sinister picture. Sudan red, known for preserving the meat's color, and gelatin, which solidifies within the pork post-injection, pose serious health risks. Experts warn of potential allergic reactions, heart palpitations, and muscle spasms among consumers of such tainted meat. The issue extends beyond pork to include other livestock like sheep and cattle. A chilling account from a buffalo slaughterhouse reveals a gruesome practice of pumping water into the animals before slaughter. Under the cover of darkness, workers inject massive amounts of water into the bellies of these creatures, leading to agonizing deaths. Despite being reported to authorities, such atrocities persist, highlighting the pervasive moral decay and disregard for animal welfare. Even the realm of agriculture is not spared from unethical practices. In Lancy County, renowned for its delectable cantaloupes, farmers resort to spraying melons with sweeteners to enhance their flavor. While these additives may appeal to consumers' palates, the long-term health implications are dire, underscoring the urgent need for systemic reform and stringent enforcement of food safety regulations. In a nation where profit often takes precedence over ethics, the onus falls on both authorities and consumers to demand transparency and accountability in the food industry. Only through collective action can China hope to restore trust and ensure the integrity of its food supply chain. Local growers assert their avoidance of chemically treated melons due to reported stomach issues associated with consumption. The presence of sweeteners like cyclamate, which is prescribed by the US FDA, raises concerns about potential liver damage and neurological impacts. Despite these risks, regional agricultural oversight bodies permit the unregulated application of such additives. Online commentators have highlighted that the use of enhancers on cantaloupes extends beyond Heilongjiang, permeating regions nationwide. This pervasive practice underscores a broader trend wherein cantaloupe cultivation relies heavily on chemical pesticides, a tradition spanning many years. Furthermore, the agricultural landscape includes instances of peanuts cultivated with highly toxic pesticides, grapes grown with contraceptive pills, and aquatic life subjected to growth hormone augmentation. In a sobering revelation, Lu Mei, a respected columnist at Sohu, disclosed China's staggering annual pesticide consumption, totaling approximately 3.5 million tons, constituting nearly half of the global pesticide usage. Over the past few decades, China's reliance on pesticides has surged by 136.1%, surmounting 1.806 million tons by 2014, signifying an alarming trajectory. The country should step in and take action. What I want to say is that everything depends on oneself. No one can control everything. If we don't restrain ourselves, it's really dangerous. The hospital's hands have long reached into your wallet. Control your mouth and hands. Let's not buy drinks, not drink milk tea, not order takeout, not buy pre-made meals, not buy food containing trans fats, try not to eat anything with additives, raise awareness of food safety, and protect ourselves. Otherwise, sooner or later, all the money will have to be sent to the hospital. Not only will we suffer, but our whole family will suffer too. There's a company specializing in children's supplementary food called Bellamy. On their fruit puree packaging, it's stated that it contains no Chinese components. These six simple words indicate exceptionally high product quality, reassuring consumers that no cheap raw materials are added. In recent years, one of the foreign food standards surprisingly includes the absence of Chinese components. Similar slogans have become a major selling point on product packaging. In China, some people also consider the absence of Chinese components as one of the standards for evaluating food safety. This indicates China's food products face significant controversy in the international market, which is worrying. Only after a series of food safety incidents were reported abroad did it raise external awareness, and domestic people are also well aware of this. Give him 3,000 kilograms of grapes. He can turn 1,000 kilograms of grapes into raisins with his feet. He dodged the old altar sour pickles but he couldn't dodge the raisins. The person who never washes raisins is now collectively silent. Some netizens even said, I've always soaked raisins in water to drink. It turns out I've been drinking foot washing water. I always wash my hands before eating to keep them clean, but I never thought my hands were cleaner than raisins. I used to think my mom was being overly cautious when washing raisins, but now I feel like slapping myself. So, everyone, remember to wash these dried goods before eating them in the future. Some people have recently discovered the secret recipe for roast duck and are calling for a halt to eating roast duck. Let's watch the video first. The sizzling roast duck is here. Look at its neck, 
full of fish blood, put some hydrogen peroxide on it, soak it overnight, and the fish blood will come out. Then clean up the remaining internal organs. Basically, this completes the first step of processing this raw material. Pick out the tougher bits, and that's essentially the cost of a $20 roast duck. Just a simple understanding of the raw materials. Would you dare to eat such ducks? Especially those ducks that cost around 20 yuan. Normally, ducks take about 5 to 6 months to raise. But what you don't know is that these ducks can be raised into enzymes in just one month. Why do we need to pay 80 or 90 yuan for a live duck, but only 20 something yuan for a roasted duck? This kind of roast duck, the price has dropped to almost nothing. What's good about it? In fact, it's just frozen duck meat. Merchants outside all use this kind of duck, which has never seen the sun and has never been washed. It has one characteristic, which is that its meat grows unusually fast. The most important thing during farming is to prevent them from getting sick. So, every time they feed, they add a large amount of antibiotics. Ingesting too many antibiotics can cause a decrease in white blood cells and even damage the liver and kidneys. For the sake of the taste of this roast duck, monosodium glutamate comes in, and to make this roast duck look bigger and fuller, complex phosphates come in, to make this roast duck sell well, chili sauce flavoring and maltol come in. Finally, what we see is a roast duck overflowing with fragrance, crispy and tender. Oh, this is too terrifying to imagine. Friends, please don't eat it anymore, okay? You might say, rice, dumple, and flour should be safe, right? No, even flour is being adulterated now. Many manufacturers are adding talcum powder in large quantities for profit. However, talcum powder is classified as a group 3 carcinogen by the World Health Organization, and the country has expressly prohibited its addition to flour. Such unscrupulous businesses are everywhere. According to the prepackaged food regulations, the additive content in flour must not exceed 25%. That means, the flour you buy has one quarter additives. To maximize the use of these 25% additives, let's see how factories operate. They extract wheat germ and embryos, which are sold at higher prices, leaving behind the part we know as flour. This kind of flour not only lacks nutrients but also darkens in color and has a poor taste, neither fragrant nor chewy. To make the inferior flour appear white, they add bleaching agents and preservatives. If the dumpling skins you buy outside are not sticky and don't boil down easily, it's probably due to the chemical reactions caused by these technologies. Such flour is completely a blend of additives, aren't our ordinary bodies anymore? Let's be cautious when buying flour in the future, after all, there was the infamous tainted milk powder incident in 2008, the old altar sour pickles incident exposed by March 15th, as well as the recent Qingdao beer urine incident and fake honey incident, and a series of other social phenomena, which one of them hasn't shocked us? In China, you have to eat at least 20 kinds of genetically modified fish a day. Breakfast is leek containing fried dough sticks, along with artificial tofu, and in the soy milk, there's water and soybeans, not to mention the essence. If you're not full yet, how about a tray of lymph filled steamed buns? At this point, you rush home to cook your own meals. Except for the charcoal stove, everything else is real, but all the lamb rolls, beef rolls, and pork belly rolls are soaked in formaldehyde water. After this day, there are few things that are real, but one thing is real, if you get sick from eating this, you'll spend a lot of money at the hospital. It may sound funny, but people's health is really important. Half of the world's pesticides are used in China. Pesticides can be divided into herbicides, insecticides, rodenticides, fungicides, etc. according to their effect. Global agricultural production uses about 3.5 million tons of pesticides every year, of which China, the United States, and Argentina account for 70%. China alone accounts for about half of the world's total pesticide use. In 2014, China's pesticide use was 1.8069 million tons. Over the past 20 years, the number of pesticide poisoning cases caused by food residues and chemical additives in mainland China has exceeded 100,000 annually, and nearly 40% of cancers are caused by diet. Vegetables sprayed with pesticides may appear fresh and tender, but they often contain pesticide residues, including various pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, rodenticides, fungicides, ripeners, and preservatives. These substances attach to the surface of vegetables, making it impossible to identify them with the naked eye. Vegetables also lose their original flavor, posing significant health risks to consumers. Farmers themselves know the harm of these additives to their health, so they don't eat the products they grow themselves. Yet, if everyone thinks this way, it's hard for anyone to avoid harm. Nobody is safe from injury in a society where harm is mutual. 
Our only chance to end this destructive loop is to eliminate privileges and raise everyone's moral standards.